Okay, so uh, it's finally time to print. You have your image resized. You have a test strip layer put on top of it. You have it all saved over onto an external device such as a thumb drive or an external hard drive. You have your, your paper ready to go. Uh, and now it's time to, to turn the printer on and set that up. The first thing we want to do is to download the printing instructions um, to print on an Epson paper. And it's, it's really just a, a simple like 11 step process to print on these printers. Um, but there's some specific things that you have to hit. Uh, and this handout gives it all to you. The next thing we want to do is we want to turn on the printer and go ahead and get it set up so that we can start printing. To do that, you press the on button. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to put this printer through a nozzle check. Now, this is something we need to do every single time we turn the printer on so that the print heads stay healthy and they will last, um, they'll last a long time. So to do that, we press the menu button, go down to test print, click down to test print, click over, nozzle check, and then we want to click on auto. Now, to do a nozzle check, you need to get a single sheet of white, a single sheet of white uh, printer paper, just normal cheap paper, and slide it into the uh, into the tray back there. Now we're coming back. We're going to hit auto again, and then we hit enter to start printing that. And that will print out a nozzle check pattern and it makes sure that the printer is uh, working well. So now that the nozzle check is done, we, uh, we have a nozzle check pattern. And basically, this is what a good nozzle check pattern will look like. Uh, you'll notice that there is one checkerboard pattern for each of the colors that we have available in the printer. So uh, this is what you're looking for. If, you, if it, the printer does have problems, uh, it might give you another line of one of the nozzle checks, uh, such as, you know, this, this whole line would be duplicated, and there would probably be holes uh, in the, the checkerboard pattern that uh, would then be filled in with the next line. So that's normal. That's how it, it does some maintenance. So it's good that you, uh, it's good when you can do a nozzle check pattern, and you need to do it every single time when you're starting to set up the printer. The next thing we want to do is put some paper in so that we can go ahead and start printing. Now, sometimes these printers will pull in multiple sheets of paper, so I always recommend keeping it really straightforward and putting in one sheet of paper each time. Uh, you'll want to make sure that the paper has, uh, is the emulsion side up. Now, if you, got the, if you did get the Epson paper, you're going to notice, if I get really close here, that there's an Epson logo on it. You sort of see that? Um, and that's the back of the paper. So it's important to know which side the back is. Uh, the other way you can tell is some of the emulsion has a bit of a shine to it. So if you get the luster paper, there's a bit of a shine to that emulsion. And so you put shiny side up, and you just drop that into the carriage there. Um, it's really straightforward. You just drop it in, and now that's ready to print. So let's go over to the computer and get the file set up uh, in the computer. So I have my images on my thumb drive. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the keyboard here. Now, you can plug a thumb drive into the keyboard, uh, but I don't recommend plugging an external hard drive in through the keyboard. And the reason I don't recommend that is the cord from these keyboards uh, could some sometimes have a short in them. And if it's permanent storage, such as an external hard drive, you want to make sure that the uh, file gets all the way to uh, the hard drive safely. And if it's going through two cords, that might, uh, you know, the cord that's going into the hard drive plus the cord that's coming in through the keyboard, th there might be a short there uh, which would give you a, a glitch in your file. And so you want, never want to make, make sure that you always plug your hard drives into the back of the computer, uh, but it is okay to plug in the thumb drives into the, uh, into the keyboard. So now that I have my thumb drive plugged in, I can go ahead and pull up my file in Photoshop. Let's get out of bridge. So couple of ways to do that. Obviously, I saved this out as a PSD, a Photoshop document, uh, so I could just double click it and that'll open it in Photoshop. Okay, so now we have our file open in Photoshop. Go ahead and grab the move tool just so we don't mess anything up. Now we're ready to start printing. 
Now, on the document that, you're, that you have, you're going to want to make sure that you go through the image size uh, dialog and make sure you have a test strip ready because the test strip's the first thing that we want to print. Um, so on this document that you have, uh, the first thing that we have to do is flatten our image. And it's always good practice to send flattened files across the, the, the wire. Now, uh, the reason why that is is you want to be able to send as small a file as possible. Uh, as, as small an uncompressed file as possible. And so to flatten my image, I can come over here to the layers panel, click on the, the little uh, four stripes over here, four lines, and then bring up, uh, or then click on, sorry, flatten image. And basically that will take all of your information and compress that into one layer, just a background layer. So then step two is to check my image size. And this is just as a double check. We've already done it once. We've already image sized it. But we want to double check to make sure that it's 10 and a half by 7. That will fit onto an 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper very nicely. So now that we've checked that, we can either click OK or cancel, either way. And then three, uh, we want to make sure that it's pr printing at 300 PPI. So we checked on that. It looked pretty good. So the next step that we go through is we want to go to File, Print. And that brings up the Print dialog box. Now, the first thing that I always do when I have any dialog box open, well, most dialog boxes, uh, is I want to make sure that I can see it. So I'm going to hit the little plus, green plus sign, and that'll blow it up uh, so that it fits all the way across the screen. OK, so just like, um, just like Every other dialog in Photoshop, we start at the top and then we work our way down. So the first thing we want to do is click on uh, the Epson 3300 and make sure that we're selecting the Epson 3300, which this is the printer that we're going to be using, the Epson 3300. We want one copy. Then we come over to Color Management Settings. We're going to come back to Print Settings. This is actually one of the rare exceptions that we start at the top and move all the way down. It's the rare exception. Uh, we also could change the layout, so it's landscape layout. Go to print, uh, go to color management and then color handling. We want to tell uh, the printer that Photoshop will handle the colors because Photoshop and this computer are much more intelligent than this printer. So tell it that Photoshop will manage the colors. And then we need to select the paper that we have chosen. Now, as you can see here, we're at step four now. And we want to make sure that we have premium photo luster paper selected, which is the, uh, looks like that's the eighth one down. And basically, photo premium luster paper is the paper we've chosen. And we want to make sure that those line up with whatever paper choice you've made. We'll go with normal printing, and we can go with relative color metric. Those are all very standard, um, very standard settings. Okay, so from this point, now we'll come back up to print settings, which is right here by the copy, uh, by the number of copies. And then we'll click on show details in the print settings. Now this brings up the Epson 3300 print dialog, which we then have to tell it what we want to do, what we want it to do. So first thing is we, on our paper size, we want US letter. Uh, this looks like uh, eight and a half by 11 is correct. Then we'll click where it says layout. We have a drop down menu uh, that we want to that we want to select, and we want to select printer settings. And then in the printer settings, we want to make sure that we tell it the right media type. So uh, first thing, uh, if we click on the media type, we can find down here uh, photo paper, and then ultra premium photo luster paper. And, Basically, we want to make sure that the paper matches here, that it looks like uh, that it's the paper we chose and we bought uh, over there. So ultra premium luster photo paper. Then we come to output resolution, and we want to click on 2880. So we want super photo. We don't want just photo. And then we want to make sure that high speed is clicked on. Basically, high speed uh, allows the printer to print going both ways. It'll print as the, it'll print ink as it goes from right to left, and then, it'll, will, then it will print ink as it goes from left to right as well. If that's clicked off, it just prints ink going right to left. And then I, after that, I hit Save. 
And you'll see that now we have the borders are all around the paper correctly. So we have the, these little um, striped line, diagonal line borders uh, are even around the, the page, which is what we want it to look like. The scaling is at 100%, and then we hit print. Okay, so now we have our, our first test print that's come out, and we need to look at it and examine to make sure that we have good information and we know which exposure adjustment layer we want to print. Okay, and so what I'm seeing here is obviously minus two is too dark, minus 1.5 is too dark, one is too dark, even minus 0.5 is too dark. Zero, which is where I had originally toned it, looks pretty good, but also plus 0.5 looks okay. The only issue is that there's not a lot of detail in the highlights, so we might want to, to work on that a little bit. Uh, then we have plus one, definitely bad, plus 1.5, definitely even worse, and then plus two, obviously worse. So it's between 0.5 and zero, and so I need to go in and do some, uh, some selecting and making sure that that's exactly what I want before I make my final print. Okay, so I'm back in Photoshop now, and I, I can look into my layer and see, actually, before we do that, let's come back to before we flattened it. So I go to my history and then select the open image. But I can look back into my layer and use the eyedropper tool at three by three average and then look over here at my info palette using the grayscale uh, info, info selector where it just says K. And I can see that if I print at plus 0.5, I will have zero ink in this section of my, uh, of my print. But if I print over here at zero, it's at 16. So it's somewhere between these two. All right? So I want to come in. Let's go ahead and turn off my exposure layer and my, uh, my exposure adjustment group and my type group. And then I can add in an exposure adjustment layer, and maybe let's try 0.25. So that will give us sort of mostly what we were trying to get at plus 0.5. And I want to walk around my image to make sure that nothing is blown out. I can also come over here to my histogram and make sure that nothing's blown out. Um, I can also come in and I can put a exposure uh, histogram layer, an adjustment layer with a histogram, a, a levels layer, and then hold the option key down and see exactly where things are blown out because it did say in my histogram that I'm blown out in certain sections. So we see that they're blown out right here. There's a zero. Uh, and one thing we want to be cautious of is we see that it's zero over zero, which means that there's not any information regardless of which layer is selected. Well, there's a little info there, but not much. So something I might want to do is take our highlights down just a bit. There we go. And then only go in and brush with a black brush on the mask. So I'm going to flip this around, brush with the black brush. Right click, increase the size, and make, it, make sure it's zero hardness. And we'll even take the opacity of my brush down to like 30%. And I'm just brushing in these highlights. Now if we increase the size of our thumbnails so we can see, you see here that I've brushed in just where it's getting a little bit too bright. And I also might want to do that same move to the exposure adjustment mask. Because the white, the white mask will show you what's going on and the black mask or anything that's painted black will cover up what's going on within that layer. And we just build that up so it looks sort of natural. Increase the size, there's much bigger feather.
And I might also want to come in and paint some of these highlights back up a bit. And the reason I just rearranged the mask is uh, I like to have my exposure adjustment layer being the last thing that I do. Uh, and so it just makes sense to me that I would put that below my, uh, my levels adjustment mask. With the eyedropper tool, I can see that's at 3%, which is nice. 5%, good, good. And maybe let's try taking this up to 30, or to plus 3, or plus 0 0.3, I should say. And I think that's too far, so we're going to just back to 0 0.25. There we go. And so it's right at 2%, 1%, uh, that'll be fine. Basically, we, want, we have ink there, which is what we want but it, we've gotten to that point where we've used the full extent of the histogram. Okay, so now that we're ready to go, I'm gonna load up the paper and we'll walk through the print dialog one more time. Okay, so now that we have the paper loaded and we're, we're ready to print, first thing I wanna do, just like before, is flatten my image just so it sandwiches everything down. Uh, it's gonna ask if I wanna discard my hidden layers. Yes, I do. And then I can come over to File, Print. Okay, so at this point, the image size is already done. We did that before. Um, the paper size looks pretty good. In fact, most of these settings should be the exact same, but I always want to double check some things to make sure that nothing has changed. So Epson 3880, which is good. That's what we want. Photoshop is managing our colors. And then if we go to print settings, uh, eight and a half by 11, good. Printer settings. It says here that we're doing ultra premium luster photo paper and uh, Super Photo 2880 and then at high speed. So everything is the same. Click Save and click Print and then we're ready to go. So it becomes a lot easier when, you're, when you start printing these things over and over. Okay, so the print is done and I'm looking at the finished product and I don't see any uh, what I call holes in the print which we sort of covered before where the highlights don't have ink in them and my shadows have a nice luminous quality to them there's a lot of good drama to the image. Uh, and so now we have a completed eight and a half by 11 print uh, sized, image sized at 10 and a half by seven.